You are listening to Unified Through Chronic and Mental Illness with your hosts, Angie Roberts and Kimberly Murphy. Please be advised that some of the topics of this podcast can be triggering and sensitive in nature. I would love to learn why hatred is triggered so easily. I don't, um, I feel like sometimes hatred is triggered easy, more easily than love, but maybe it just depends on the person. Hi everyone, this is Kimberly. Welcome back to Unified. This week we're talking about stinking thinking or more specifically, how to challenge feelings of negativity and create a positive mindset, which of course can create a positive life. This is more than just faking happy when things get rough. And there are most likely those of you out there that are skeptical that what you can think can make a real difference. We think we can at least raise your interest by the end of this podcast. See, positive thinking in action. But first, what exactly is negative thinking, Angie? So negative thinking is cognitive distortion. Cognitive distortion is twisted thinking. It's lies your brain tells you. Um, These lies are all extremely negative thoughts that bring on longer periods of depression or severe negative moods. I can absolutely understand this because for most of my life, I've had extremely negative thoughts about my body image. And I know Mm -hmm. I've talked about that in a previous podcast about body dysmorphia. Um, but it, it can get so severe. Like my brain will tell me things to the point where I don't want to go and do things I actually really do want to do because Mm -hmm. I don't want people to see me. Well, distortion is when I looked it up, they said twisted and untrue thoughts. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like with anxiety, like when you have anxiety, Mm. it seems like this would be something that occurs constantly. I know it does with most people when they have anxiety, I have to keep saying to my friends, remember, it's not true. This is a lie or depression when you're like, so in your head, you know, your head is such a dangerous place to be when you're depressed because it's lie after lie after lie. Right. I was going to say, I think this goes along with a lot of like disorders, Mm -hmm. PTSD and, Mm -hmm. uh, even borderline personality disorder. Right. Speaking of which, mental health warrior Royston Tilt says, with each thought or emotion, we reinforce a neural pathway. Your thoughts create a new way of being. You actually form new neural pathways. So, Kimberly, I guess we actually change our brain pathways when we think. Positive. About, well, yeah, when we think positively and when we think negatively, so and how we feel. So uh, we've we've got all these negative things going on in our brain, but it can be changed to positive. That was another thing that I, I did learn that the the pathways can, if they're not used, they kind of go away. Um, it's really interesting how. Um, the brain works even up to when they're older they really can make new neural pathways and um, sometimes it's just because they don't use it they're losing it so there are actually some ways that negative thinking can affect you as a whole marquimedical.com and moodsmith.com say it can lead to degenerative brain diseases cardio issues low immune system, depression, apathy, anxiety, and fear. Wow. Which, yeah, I can see all of that. But degenerative brain disease, wow. Negative thoughts are learned from other kids, teachers, your family members, caregivers, and from prejudice and stigmas in our society. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, how else do you learn to have a prejudice against any group of people? You know, children don't know that. They're taught that. It's definitely a learned behavior. It is. And then also like the media, the media will teach us so many things at such a young age. And I'm only going to mention this one thing, but there's so many other things that it could, it could apply to. But like women, as small girls, we're taught that we're supposed to look a certain way. Um, media really kind of like is designed to make us feel less than and not attractive enough so that we grow up to be consumers. You know, because it's all a money thing. So how sad is it, though, that they try to make us feel insecure so that we will buy their products to feel 
quote unquote, more secure. And we never get to that point. Right. Um, so, yeah. Right. It's so true. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, so you know, let's talk about Disney movies. No, let's not. Let's not. Let's not. Yes, let's go for it. Go. <laughs> Disney movies. Go. <laughs> no, I just think that, um, you know, alongside I wish that uh, growing up alongside my my beautiful Disney movies with my Prince Charming thinking that right. my mom would have said this is not really how it works. Right. And because, thank goodness it doesn't, because yeah. remember what Carly said when she was with us last season? <laughs> I will never forget it. She's like, who would want to be Cinderella? This guy didn't even know who she, who she was. He had to go around trying on shoes on girls. <laughs> like, who wants to be with a guy who doesn't even know who you are? <laughs> Some guy that just found you out in the middle of the forest and decided to kiss you. That's a little creepy, okay? Right, right. So, like, when you <laughs> Right. So, but it's true though, because every Disney movie teaches women that they're going to be saved by some random man who just swoops her off her feet out of nowhere. It and so true. girls grow up thinking maybe this is the guy. Right. You know, and Everybody, they never know. It, you hear so many people say, I, well, I'm looking for my Prince Charming. I'm looking yep. for my Prince. I'm looking for I my know. fairy tale. And well, but let's let's flip it too because guys saw the same stories, so they always believe that they had right, to be yeah. that person. And uh, that's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure for a man. So much so, pressure. Mm -hmm, yeah, we still want our Prince Charming, though, guys. Just just saying. Oh yeah, don't yeah. I'm single <laughs> and just leave your and message kissed, below. Kissed enough. <laughs> kissed enough frogs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Unfortunately, in today's world, there's just so much hatred going on. There's, mm -hmm. it feels like the United States is split. Especially it, our country, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I'm not taking sides on whatever side that you're on. Um, well, actually, I, I hope you're on the good side, not on the hatred <laughs> side. <laughs> but I'm just talking about like politically or whatever. I'm not, I'm not even talking about politically or. Right. Whatever. We're not, it we're just, not taking a political stance. We're just discussing right. like how hatred is formed and, and things like that. Um, right. You're right it, though. There's a huge division. It, yeah, it's so sad. I hope that uh, our country heals quickly from this because I just, I really just want there to be just one United States, not, not this mm -hmm. craziness that we have going on now. Right. But hatred I is a rel relatively stable, intense dislike of another person, entity, or group. Right. And so we have a lot of that going on in our country right now, race being like the huge problem. And not just race, which is huge, huge, um, affects so many Americans. Um, but also the alphabet group, I'm calling them the alphabet warriors. The but, alphabet um, warriors. Right. But um you know, specifically the transgender community who is really fighting for their rights right now in a very hard way because um, they're being discriminated against more so than any of those people, those groups. Right. Um, you know, it's there's so much division and it's so sad because we have more in common than we have, you know, not in common. We really do. And you see a lot of hatred toward r certain religions and uh, mm -hmm. especially, I'm just going to say the Islamic religion, especially like mm -hmm. as a lot of hatred toward the Islamic religion. Um, and people don't understand these things. I feel like hatred, people that are have a lot of hatred are kind of in a box and they're not seeing what's outside the box. Um, they're oh. just content with their box. And well, happy. they do say that like negative thinking causes narrow thinking. Right. So I agree with what you're saying there. And um, this kind of makes me think back to like, okay, so where does the hate start? It starts in childhood usually, right? You don't just like wake up one day and hate a group. Um, right, right. So you're kind of like raised to be this way or something happens to you. And bullying in school right. can actually cause somebody to become either um you know the bully is hateful because somebody's bullying them at home 
or something's right. happening. And then they're spreading the hate to somebody else who then becomes bullied and maybe later in life is not so nice to other people. It can make you either way. It can make you more empathetic or it can make you, you know, um, lack compassion. Yeah. Right. Um, were yeah, you, you were bullied in school, right? You talked about that before. I was very bullied in school and they say hatred is the absence of compassion. And I really, truly believe that mm -hmm. because it just to have compassion for somebody else and then to bully them or to hate on them or whatever, it's, you can't do that. You can't have both in the same um, mm -hmm. person. Um, yeah, I was bullied all through school and, you know, a lot of the negative thoughts that I have are the negative thoughts that I was told yeah from the bullies or yep. um from the issues with my parents or oh you know you just i don't think people understand that when you're told something over and over again and this goes into toxic relate i mean so many things toxic relationships family issues you walk around hearing those things in your head that person's voice is still in your ear Yes. Um, and you take it with yes, you. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it becomes a part of your belief system if you hear it so many times. And it's really hard to let go of. So um, hatred spreads and it's like a disease. It really does spread like a disease. It does. It, I don't know. I would love to learn why hatred is triggered so easily. Mm -hmm. I don't... Um, I feel like sometimes hatred is triggered easy, more easily than love, but maybe it just depends on the person. I think that negative um, thoughts are easier for us to understand for some reason. Like, it's so weird to think about that we can believe a lie about ourselves before we can think a positive, loving thought and believe that. And I think it's a product of our environment. When we look around and we see all this division and we see all this stuff happening, it's kind of hard to, to like look at ourselves and not believe the lies that we're telling ourselves, the lies that we're hearing, the lies that we've been brought up with. Right. Um, but as adults, we have a choice. We do have a choice. Mm -hmm. We can get help. And exactly. We can learn how yep. to fight those stinking thinking moments. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was reading a really good article in goodtherapy.com when I was researching about why um, even why people hate another person or group, because it, it, it's really hard for me to understand. So this is a very interesting, this, uh, this right here has been very interesting for me. So um, they say they feel envy for the other people or group, have contempt for another person or feel they are inferior, learn hatred from parents, their community or social group are humiliated or mistreated by another person, which we were just talking about bullying. So, right. Um, I do think though, that a lot of people learn hatred from their parents um, against social groups. And again, I'm talking about race here. Right. I'm sorry, I have to say it. Okay. Um, but some people will grow up thinking that fighting another race is a purpose in life. They are so strong about their belief or religion, same thing. Right. They are so strong or anti-religion. They are so strong about it. They feel like it's their purpose and they're doing good. Well, I have a story about learning hatred from your parents. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was brought up in a tiny town in Arkansas where there was like literally no black people or, I mean, no people of color, really. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, my dad was born in 1922. My parents were 25 years apart, so that's kind of weird. But my board, my dad was born in 1922, so therefore wow. he had a different outlook on life. <laughs> my dad was mm -hmm. prejudiced. My mom wasn't prejudiced, but she believed that blacks, the races shouldn't mix. That's what she believed. And mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was taught this. I was taught the hatred. But I never learned the hatred. Like, I just, I never remember being scared of a black person or feeling, you know, any kind of anything weird for them. Like, I would even, if I saw 
if I saw another race of a person in Walmart in Arkansas, where I lived, I would make sure and meet their eyes and smile just because I want you to know there's one friend in this whole place. <laughs> Right, because you knew how bad it was in general for them. Yeah, well, you know, at that time, I really didn't understand that I moved to Detroit. And I can't say that I totally understand, but I have walked into some all uh, other race uh, areas that they look at me quite strangely. And it's not just the black community. It's, uh, I, I mm -hmm. mean, I live by Detroit. We have lots of communities here. So um, they all kind of look at you like, what are you doing here? So um, <laughs> I, I kind of, I can relate. Feel, I can relate to that. I can relate to that because we went to Miami and just outside Miami, there is a community um, that is heavily Cuban mm -hmm. And then as you get more into deeper into Miami, they actually call it like second Cuba. Mm -hmm. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper. You can't even find a radio station that has English. So, <laughs> so I mean, I was there and I was like, I got this first experience of being a minority. Um, well, it wasn't my first. I had been in New Mexico too, which is a whole nother story. But, you know, you're right. When you go into these communities where um, you are not the majority, you're a minority. Um, you get a taste of what it feels like and it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling to feel like you're not in how I felt was I'm not in my own country. I felt like I was in another country. <laughs> that was my first yes, thought, right? I felt like I so, was not where I was supposed to be. Right. So imagine how uh, minorities feel on a regular basis. Right. 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 And they're they're trying to be a part of their country, their community, their their place. So um, yeah, I just once I felt that, it just made me feel so horrible. I mean, I'm like you. I I was I grew up in uh, Southern Vermont, mm -hmm. and we had one black boy in our whole entire school, and he, he was my he was my first boyfriend, <laughs> and my father was just appalled yeah just but. was not happy mm -hmm. not happy at all so um like you i had beliefs in my house but right. i didn't accept them as my well own. Yeah, yeah i didn't accept them my, as my own and then i met somebody and he was black and we have a mixed baby so therefore a beautiful mixed baby yes. guys he's so cute uh, yeah. look on our tiktok you'll see right him. he's something else <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so you're having these negative thoughts so challenge yourself think is the thought you're having true are your thoughts making you feel powerful or are they minimizing your ability to take action? Can you find some positivity to put a spin on your negative thought? Look at the situation to find the silver lining or lesson that you can learn. I love that part because I always try to, even if something is horrible, there's a lesson in right. everything. It can make you a better person. I agree. Mm -hmm. Even if um, it's not your fault. fault right? right. Any negative it's situation never... at all. You, there's something that you can learn in it. Right. How would how would life look differently if you didn't dwell on your negative thought? And mm. right. <laughs> and how would thinking more positively free you? Mm. Is the negative thinking getting in the way of overcoming or addressing your issue head on? And is your negativity parlaying you from taking positive action to change? You can find a lot more information about this on chatowl.com. Um, it's a great article, but. You know, the one that really spoke to me was learning something from every negative situation rather mm -hmm. than letting the negativity cause hatred for you. I think that is really uh, important. And that's that is really where the positive thinking is. It's not just saying nice things and thinking good mantras and, you know, meditating. Um, when things get really difficult, you can either say, this difficult thing caused me to do this bad thing to you or bad thing in general or bad thing to myself to make me worse. Or you can say this, this challenging thing, 
I took and molded me for the better. There is a positive that I can learn from this and become a better person. Right. There was a couple that stood out to me. Uh, what the one about how would life look differently if you didn't dwell on your negative thoughts? Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Right. That's like, it would probably be a lot less stressful. That's what life would look like. And how would thinking more positively free you? I think they could kind of go together because if, yeah. you're, um, if you don't dwell on those thoughts, you are freed. So, I mean, if you're not great at positive thinking, it really, it really is mind over matter. It takes practice. Um, but if you have chronic limiting beliefs, it will be nearly impossible to create the life you want and that you deserve. You will constantly sabotage yourself and you won't understand why. But the good news is that limiting beliefs can be changed. The first step is to convince yourself that you deserve it. And that is probably the hardest for most people. Uh, yes, definitely. That's hard for me. It is for me too. Convince and myself that I mm -hmm. deserve anything. Well, when you're thinking negative, it's really, it's really hard, right? To say <sighs> I deserve something. It um, is. But think about it. With you know your higher power, the universe, whatever you want to call it, know that the universe wants you to be happy, fulfilled, and prosperous. Why? Simply because you can affect more positive growth for the rest of the planet. I mean, if you're good within yourself, you can give good to others. All right. If right? your light is if your light is lit, you can help others in the darkness. Exactly. Works and better. right. So why would the universe, higher power, whatever you believe in, be against you on that? You right. know, I think our purpose is to be positive. So think about that for a moment. If you're constantly struggling to make ends meet or feeling drained, feeling stressed by your job or overwhelmed by personal struggles, how much are you able to help others who? or even worse situations. Probably not much, right? Um, right? I know we try and we do help, but you know it's not as much as we want to. If things are going really well for you and you have plenty of resources at your disposal, you can then use those resources to help others and make a real difference. You can find more about this at wingsfortheheart.com. I just thought it was so powerful. And the one thing that really stood out to me was a positive mindset is a growth mindset it's a growth right. mindset it's a growth mindset and we need to have a growth mindset not a closed mindset exactly <laughs> and i think that's what a lot of people miss because they're like you're just thinking all these happy little butterfly thoughts no we're, we're thinking about growth we're thinking about becoming better people that is what positive thinking does i was watching a ted talk the other day with bruce pulver and he said words can truly be our friends or foe he said there are three things you can ask yourself. Is this message true? Should a person say this to another person? If not, why am I saying it to myself? That's a good one. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. What do I get out of thinking these thoughts? If it makes me feel bad about myself, why not stop thinking about it? That's hard. It is. It's so hard to stop thinking about it when, you know, like we said at the beginning, you actually make the neuron pathways in your, in your brain. So it's like literally you're having to change the neuron pathway. So it's going to take time. But also, he said to develop positive loving statements to replace negative thoughts, use words like happy, peaceful, loving, enthusiastic, and warm. Avoids word, avoid words like frightened, upset, tired, or not, never, and of course, can't. Instead of I'm not going to have anxiety today, I am going to be peaceful today. Right. Right. So how, so, does, that, how does that work, though? If you actually have an anxiety disorder, are they saying that if you say that to yourself, it can actually put you in a more calming state? Yeah, it helps you to change your thinking. Actually, at mayoclinic.com, it says researchers continue to explore the effects of positive thinking and optimism on health. Health benefits that positive thinking may provide include increased lifespan. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Lower rates of depression, lower rates of distress, a better immune system, better cardiovascular system. Better coping skills during hardships and times of stress. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's funny because they say like um, 
the people in like Asia, uh, Japan, whatever, um, they have like an increased lifespan. And I think a lot of it has to do with their positive thinking and their meditation. Meditation, right. right? So, yeah. Wow. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And we have less of that in our country. So it does make sense. I wonder if Betty White meditates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she does. And she definitely has a positive outlook on things. Or at least she does. a sense of humor, <laughs> which a can help. sense of humor. Right? Yes, yeah, she's one of my favorites. Me too. I love her. There's another way to change your thoughts, turning blue thoughts into true thoughts. Blue is an acronym. B, meaning blaming myself. L, looking for bad news. U, unhappy guessing. And E, exaggerated negative talk. So examples of this is nobody cares about me. You would change that to I am loved by many people. And look for the evidence in that. Look and tell yourself, name the people that you uh, that actually love you mm -hmm. so that you can always have the evidence to back things up. Right. Right. And another one is I can't do anything right. There's a uh, change that one to there are some things that are hard for me to do. Right. I mean, we're not great at everything. <laughs> we're not great at everything. Right. right. Um, I would. Also, when I was listening to Bruce Pulver, he said, actions are supposed to speak louder than words, but our words trigger everything, which I thought was really interesting. Well, it also kind of says that in the Bible, right? Your heart equals your words equals your actions. So people say but words mean yes, mean yes, and no, no, mean no. Right. And pe but people say words mean nothing. But right. the oh, truth, right, no. the truth always comes out, you know, for good or not. Because what is in your heart cannot be hidden for long. So you can say whatever you want, but eventually the truth will come out and you will, you will say the truth. You can't hide what's in your heart forever. Reading in Psychology Today. Oh my God, Psychology Today. Here we go. <laughs> no, I read in Psychology Today all the time. Psychology um, Today needs to sponsor us. Hi, Psychology hi. Today. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> right? At least give me a free subscription. <laughs> No. <laughs> they say that the good news is that with dedicated practice, you can replace negative thinking patterns with thoughts that actually help. This can make a huge difference in your day to day happiness and comfort. Try these seven ways to manage and decrease negative thoughts. First of all, recognize your thought distortions. Our minds have clever and persistent ways of convincing us of something that really isn't true. Mm -hmm. That means our minds are lying to us. Right. These inaccurate thoughts reinforce negative thinking. If you can recognize them, you can learn to challenge them. So the second one is challenging your negative thoughts. So whenever you have the distorted thoughts, stop and evaluate whether it was accurate. Go back to that list that we had. Is it true? Is it something you should say to somebody else? That list or the list uh, that Kimberly mentioned, look for the evidence. Take a break from negative thoughts. It is possible to learn how to separate from negative thoughts. One way to do this is to allow yourself a certain amount of time, maybe five minutes, with the thought, then take a break from focusing on it and move on with your day. Another way is to release judgment. We all judge ourselves and others, usually unconsciously, um, constantly comparing ourselves to other people or we compare our lives. Some ideals such as these breeds dissatisfaction. When you are able to let go of judgment, not easy to do, but possible, you will likely feel more at ease. Practice gratitude. Research shows that feeling grateful has a big impact on your levels of positivity and happiness. Even when you're experiencing a challenging time in your life, you can usually find things like even small things to be grateful for. I really agree with that. And I'm a huge advocate for practicing gratitude. You really have to look for the things that you're, you know, grateful right. for, especially in hard times. Yeah, if you don't, then it's just you're going to be sucked up mm -hmm. by the dark hole. Yeah. Which I've been sucked up by the dark hole, so I get it. Oh, I do. I have too. And that's, I think that's why I know 
how much gratitude makes a difference right. is because, you know, in the times that I was just in that hole and desperate to get out, um, I couldn't see it. So, right. Oh no. Yeah. There's no light. And you do have to practice gratitude in order to master it. Oh, definitely. It's a skill. It's, yes. All these are skills. These things don't come overnight or, um, it's I just like a bodybuilder. Right. Exactly. Who's, you know, yes. I don't think people understand that. I don't think people understand that. They're like, the external factor should make me grateful. The external factor should make me happy. The external factor should make me think positive. And that's like saying the external factor should give me muscles. Right. It's not true. It comes from within. It really does. And I think people work for it. Right. I think people think that's hokey and it's, it's like a Gandhi thing. <laughs> like it's just something people <laughs> say. It's a thing people right. say, but it's not true. It's a muscle that you work in your mind. It's a skill. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's a muscle and it needs to be worked too. It, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and all sorts of different ways. But right. Um, also, you can focus on your strengths. It's a great thing to do when you are having negative thoughts. Um, in human nature, we tend to dwell on negative and overlook the positive. The more you can practice focusing on your strengths and not dwelling on your mistakes you've made, the easier you will be to feel positive about yourself. It makes sense. Yeah. 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 And then, of course, seeking out professional support. If you are unable to manage your thoughts or find they are interfering with your ability to meet your daily responsibilities or enjoy life. Counseling and therapy can help you weather life changes, reduce emotional suffering, and experience self-growth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You know why I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah. Um, big life changes. Yeah. Don't be afraid to talk to a therapist. <laughs> Right. Um, I have a house full of people, my family, and um, it's been interesting and difficult at the same time. So um, sometimes it's situational. You need to seek out support during life changes. Do it. If it needs to be something that you need on a regular basis for support, do that too. Whatever helps Definitely. you. Yeah. So negative emotions narrow your mind. And I don't think people realize this. So we talked about how positive emotions are really good, right? And how they actually change your pathways. Um, right. There's a lot of people who are like, whatever, I'm just going to be who I am. Okay, well, those of you who want to be who you are and be negative, negative emotions narrow your mind and focus and your thoughts. In stressful situations, anger or fear response will cause you to feel as though your options are limited. So think about this. You're in the woods, there's a tiger, right? Tiger's coming towards you. Your thought is to run, right? right? In that situation, it's good. However, if you have a positive mindset, positive thinking not only opens your mind to more possibilities, it builds a skill set so that in difficult situations, you're able to see more possibilities for a more positive outcome. So the tiger's coming at you. You can run, you can climb a tree, you can do this, you can throw meat, you can, there's all these other things that you see right. at this, in this stressful situation. So negative thinkers have narrow minds. And I'm sorry to say that, but it is very true. They're probably going to think, oh, crap, Anger, I'm right. dead. Right, <laughs> That's right, exactly. And they're not prepared. And their response right. is anger or fear. Where a positive thinker, can quickly, because again, it's a skill that you develop. So true. A positive thinker can see in a second, the whole outcome, what's the best outcome and try to go for it. And this, this is actually based on psychology. Barbara Fred Fredrickson did a um, study on this. She's a positive psychology researcher at the University of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is backed up by research, but the more you practice positive thinking, the larger your mindscape is to um, solve difficult situations. Well, that makes sense. That it really does make a lot of sense because right. when I'm thinking really negative, it's hard for me to make decisions. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. And positive thinkers, they may not always think positively, but because they have that mindset, they have more of an open view. Um, right. Where negative thinkers are just like black and white. They're in the box. Right. Get out of the box. <laughs> Get out of the box, negative thinkers. So hopefully we have at least opened your mind. And we know this is a strong statement to make, but the power of positive thinking can literally solve many of our social issues causing division and create unity, especially in the United States. It and really can. Yeah, right? I mean, imagine the possibilities. What would the world be like if we were all compassionate toward each other and thought about each other? Exactly. It would be an amazing place to be. I want to live in that world. I do too, first. right? <laughs> and. Yeah. You can't be compassionate to yourself and not be compassionate towards others. And that's the beauty of it. It's really true. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's really true. So before we get to the mantra of the week, we wanted to give Royston Tilts a shout out for being such a positive influence and educator to the mental health community. He is like a guru in our eyes. We love him so much. Right, Angie? I love Royston. <laughs> I listen to like almost everything he does. He, he, um, he calls himself a mental health warrior and he really, really is. He really, he has a YouTube channel and he's really trying to empower people and in the stigma in the community. So we can't say enough positive things about him. He's, he's mm -hmm. charismatic. He's, it's just really fun to he's listen to so him. He's so well-spoken. He knows what he's talking about. If you haven't checked out his videos on YouTube, you need to. Okay. Yes. He empowers the community and we cannot say enough positive things about him. You can see him on his channel. Just go to youtube.com slash Royston Tilts. So Angie, what is the mantra of this week? Amanda Gorbin gave a speech at the inauguration and in it she said, there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. What a mm. smart young lady. It, <sighs> this new generation, I just, I just love them. No matter what side you're on, it, it was really a unifying poem, I felt like. So that's what she was trying to do. Absolutely. I think she would have done that speech uh, no matter what. And I, I feel like it was in her heart. And I feel like she wrote it long before. So um, I right. love her. I just love her. I just love her. Um, I do too. And she's a perfect example of thinking positive. She has a light in her soul. And when you practice that skill and you flex that muscle, your light and your soul grow stronger and stronger. And that is really what we're trying to get across today. Um, it is not just, you know, happy thinking and butterflies and rainbows. It's right. It's what's in your heart. It's, it's what you truly believe. And you can change your thoughts and your thoughts will change not only your health, but also your life. Yes, it's so true. It's, it's hard for people to believe they don't, it, you know, it's just one of those sayings, but mm -hmm. it's really not just one of those sayings. I think we've brought you pl plenty of proof today to show you that um, it's not just one of those sayings, along with enough ways to try to, you know, um, get that stinking thinking gone out of your head and That's right. get some good, good thinking going on. And, you know, if you need any help, you can absolutely look us up. You know where to find us. And please remember, we are stronger together as a community. We're there for you. And we know that you're there for us as well. So with that thought in mind, we'll see you next time. And mask up, guys. Peace out. Have a great day. See you next time. Unified through chronic and mental illness can be found at anchor.fm slash unified. There you can find all social media links as well as other ways to listen.